What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another update. And this is a key issue comic book market update from Comic Link. I didn't get my act together to do a part two for the August sales over at Comic Link, but I did decide to go ahead and put together a video for the September Comic Link auctions that just ended. And uh, so I got a couple of caveats. Number one, there were some incredible books in this batch of, this barely scratches the surface, what we're going to cover today. There were some incredible grails, and uh, you're not going to believe some of the prices. Uh, number two, I have gotten this question before, hey, why don't you cover other grades as it relates to books at Comic Link? Not all of us can afford or want 9.8 graded comics. And the reason for that is that Comic Link is archaic. They have the worst website when it comes to to these auctions and you cannot actually watch a comic book without bidding on it. So uh, I was able to get my bids in early on some of these books, but I'm not going to bid $20,000 on some of these books in the unlikely event that I actually want it because I just don't want to spend $20,000 on anything. So uh, that's why uh, I don't cover anything other than maybe books I've actually bid on because otherwise it's just impossible to track and even, even the closed auctions kind of go away really quickly unless you bid on them. So it's a terrible setup, but that's the way it is. Uh, let's go ahead and dig right in. Uh, the first one is a heater. This is unbelievable. This is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, the first print. And there's only, I think, 35 to 40 9.8 grades on the entire census for TMNT number one. Obviously, the first appearance of the Turtles. I think there's five or six different printings, but this is the first print. Uh, and it's very, very, very tough to get this one in a 9.8 because of the black borders. It's oversized book. It had a low print run, a number of different issues. And, and it's the origin and first appearance of the Turtles. First print. Pretty incredible. Uh, also, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird signed it on the interior cover in pen. So this is a true grail. And the price reflected that. It sold for $131,000. And I know you're saying, wow, that is a lot of money. But just keep in mind, there's only like 35 to 40 of these in a 9.8 grade. And this price is actually below the fair market value that was on uh, Go Collect. Uh, that one, uh, when this auction was ending, the, the fair market value was listed at 145000 This one sold for 131000 So uh, it's a further proof that even with these big grail books, that prices are coming down. But wow, what an incredible book. 131000 took that home. Next up, New Teen, uh, New Teen Titans number two, the new stand edition. Uh, this is the first appearance of Deathstroke the Terminator. Kind of a secondary uh you know, villain from the DC universe, but a pretty great book. And obviously the fact that it's a newsstand from a 1980 book, a little bit tougher to find that one in a newsstand. This one sold for $825 for the longest time. This was going for like $2,000. So prices have definitely come back down for this book, but what an incredible, uh, cover on this one. I, I love Deathstroke and probably not one I'll ever get. If I do get it, it'll probably be the direct edition, but I do love this book. Uh, pretty famous George Perez cover. Rest in peace, George Perez. Uh, next up is New Mutants 98, the direct edition. This is obviously the first appearance of Deadpool. Pretty easy one to find and another book that's kind of coming back down in price a little bit. This one sold for $1,400 and it's been hovering around there. I've seen as low as $1,250 uh, to as high as about $1,500 recently, but that's still off of the highs, the recent highs of about $1,800 or so. So this one has definitely come back down, but again, it's it's very plentiful in a 9.8 grade in, with white pages on the census, uh, Rob Leefield cover, uh, you know, Deadpool 3 obviously is coming out fairly soon. I, I can't remember when it's coming out, but uh, I'm looking forward to that movie very much with Wolverine coming back with Hugh Jackman. Next up is a newsstand edition of Amazing Spider-Man number 238. Very tough to find this one in a newsstand. The first appearance of the Hobgoblin. I do have this one in the direct edition in a 9.8 grade. Uh, this one sold for $29.05, and that's also down just a little bit. The last few data points I've seen were around $3,200, maybe $3,000 if you're lucky. But uh, this one did sell for $29.05, but a pretty iconic cover by John Romita Sr. and Jr., and I love having this book in my collection just in the direct edition. I'm perfectly happy with the direct edition. Uh, but this newsstand did sell for about $2,900. Uh, this is a surprising one. I, I don't know why this one sold so high. Maybe you guys can fill me in why. But this is ASM 316 uh, in the newsstand, admittedly. It's the newsstand edition, but it's signed by Todd McFarlane. Now, a 9.8 grade blue label, non-signed, 
for the newsstand of ASM 316 usually goes for about $1,100, somewhere in that ballpark. This one was admittedly signed uh, by Todd McFarlane, and uh, this one sold for $2,900. So, you know, look, I, I know that there should be a premium associated with Todd McFarlane signing such a nice book. This is the first true cover appearance of Venom. This is one I do have in the direct edition. Uh, you know, I paid like six fifty, I think, somewhere in that ballpark for the direct edition. But, you know, again, in a newsstand in a 9.8 blue label, this one goes for $1,100. I don't, I don't see paying another $1,800 for it just because it's signed by Todd McFarlane, uh, get, especially given that he signed so many books. I mean, he, it's not like his signature is that rare. It's not like a Stan Lee signature. So uh, I was really surprised by this. I was expecting kind of $1,500, maybe $1,600-ish for this one, but it blew well past that number at $2,900. That seems like a massive overpay to me. Uh, next up, I've got ASM number 194. Uh, this is the direct edition, and coming up after this, I've got the newsstand edition, but this is the first appearance of Felicia, F F uh, Felicia Hardy, who is Black Cat. Pretty great cover, and again, it's got that slash through the barcode there, so this is the direct edition. That one sold for $2,200. That's down a little bit from even last month, where one sold for around $2,600 or $2,800 on Comic Link, but a uh, pretty great book. And so that's the direct edition. And then the newsstand is here. You can see that the newsstand doesn't have the slash through the barcode. It's labeled newsstand. So freshly graded for the exact same book. And that one sold for $3,050, which, uh, again, that one also is down. I think the last sale was around $3,300. Uh, again, a pretty great book. I, I would assume we're probably going to see Black Cat at some point in some movie. I mean, she's just too popular of, of a kind of a secondary character. She's kind of like Catwoman in the Batman universe. She's kind of good, kind of bad, and at the end, she kind of ends up being good, and she becomes a friend of of, of Spider Man. But uh, it's a it's a pretty awesome book. An another one that's not particularly hard to find. These come up pretty regularly, uh, but obviously in the newsstand, it's maybe a little tougher than than the direct edition. Uh, next up, I've got Marvel Team Up number one forty one. Now's a really good time to pick this book up if if you're looking for it because it's really come back down in price. It was kind of hovering around nine hundred to a thousand dollars in uh, a direct edition for the longest time. This is tied with ASM number two fifty two for the first appearance of the black costume for Spider Man. So uh, the first appearance of the symbiote costume. Tied with ASM 252, which is obviously the bigger book, and we're going to cover that one next. Uh, but this is the direct edition, a pretty great book, Marvel Team Up, and it's got Black Widow and uh, Daredevil there on the cover. And if you're looking for this book, definitely right now is the key, is the time to buy it. This one sold for 506. That is a bargain. I mean, these have been even on eBay 700, 800, 900 bucks, and to get it for 506 was an absolute steal of a deal. Uh, and then here is what the book it's tied with, and which is ASM 252. Obviously, this is an homage to Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man. But uh, this is easily a much more iconic book than Marvel Team-Up number 141. But this was the direct edition. Uh, this is another one that's on my kind of secondary want list. My The number one one I want right now is ASM 300. That goes for around three grand. Uh, you know, if you're lucky, but probably more like thirty-five to thirty-eight hundred dollars. So that's a big, big money book in a direct edition ASM three hundred. But that's my goal for next year is to get that book. Uh, and if I do, uh, this will be the next one I target ASM two fifty-two. Pretty great cover. I actually like this cover better, to be honest with you, than ASM three hundred. But ASM three hundred is the first appearance of Venom, and I got to have that book for my collection at some point. That's that's a holy grail for me. Uh, in terms of non-Star Wars books. But anyway, this one did sell for uh, $1,025, which is a great buy. Uh, this one had been kind of going for around $1,400 to $1,600. So this is another one that seems to be kind of a sleeper on the cold list right now. So, uh, you know, Marvel Team Up 141 and ASM 252, really good time to buy both of those books right now. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, I probably would not target this book right now. And that's Incredible Hulk number 340. Uh, this is kind of the second fight between Wolverine and the Hulk. And this is a, a pretty iconic Todd McFarlane cover. And I do have this one, uh, exact same book, uh, the direct edition in a 9.8 grade. Uh, this one sold for $1,400. I would I would argue that that's probably a little high right now. You might be able to get this one closer to $1,100. Uh, and that's probably the price I would aim for if you're looking for it right now. I, I, paid, I, I think I paid $1,250, somewhere in that ballpark for mine. 
Um, but $1,400 seems like a little bit of an overpay. There was another one that did sell in this exact same Comic Link auction for $1,111. So $1,111 and $1,111 uh, for this exact same book. Both of them were freshly graded. They were both very well centered. The big thing on this one is to look for the signatures here uh, for the cover artists, McFarlane and uh, Bob Wiasek. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but sometimes this gets cut off. Sometimes uh, this top is kind of miscut, but this one was pretty perfectly centered, freshly graded, really nice example. And uh, they sold, one of them, again, sold for $1111. One of them sold for $1,400. Try to aim for closer to $1,100 on that one. Uh, next up, Daredevil 131. This is not a book that I will ever have in my collection. I can promise you that because it's so expensive. Uh, this was CBA Exceptional, so a very, very high-grade example. This is the origin and first appearance of Bullseye, a pretty major villain within the Daredevil universe and a pretty iconic cover. I mean, let's, I mean, this is... This is a big boy book, and this one sold for $7,254, so very, very pricey and not one I'm ever going to have in my collection, but I would love to have it. Uh, next up, Transformers number one. I do have this book. I picked this one up a few months ago. This is the direct edition, origin and first comic book appearance of the Autobots and Decepticons. This one sold for $15.56, so I was kind of happy to see that because I paid less than that. I paid $15.10 for my example. So this one was freshly graded, really nice example. Now, I'm sorry, it was not freshly graded. It had an older, uh, older uh, CGC number there, but uh, uh, a little bit surprised that this one's held up as well as it has, but that one did sell for about $15.50. Uh, let's dig into some Star Wars books now. Lots of really great Star Wars books sold in this September auction. Star Wars number one in a 9.8 grade. It was kind of slightly miscut or miswrapped, excuse me. Uh, so you can see the white border is not exactly uh, aligned all the way down. Uh, it was freshly graded, though, and that one did sell in an auction for $3,600. I thought that was a really good deal. That's about 10% less than what I paid for mine, although in all fairness, mine was freshly graded, and it had perfect, absolutely perfect centering, perfect colors. Uh, this one was miswrapped just a little bit, and the price reflected that. It sold for $3,600. I've seen as low as $3,200 on Instagram uh, through some of the comic book sellers uh, on Instagram, uh, but they were also miscut a little bit. But uh, this one did sell for $3,600. Next up, Star Wars number two. This is another one that's on my want list for next year. Probably not going to happen this year, but uh, this is the first comic book interior appearance of Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, I believe. And so those are three big characters that do not make their appearance in Star Wars number one, but in Star Wars number two, uh, you know, th this is kind of their first interior comic book appearance. That one sold for $2,650, another pretty good deal. Uh, $2,800 is what this one had been going for, so $2,650 was a great buy on that one. Next up, Clone Wars number one in a direct edition. Uh, this is obviously the first appearance of Ahsoka Tano in comics. Not great timing to buy this book, just given that the Ahsoka series is out on Disney+. Plus. That one sold for $1,789. I think if you're patient and you, and you wait for the Disney Plus series to come and go, you can probably pick this one up for closer to $1,600. But that is a beautiful... Uh, kind of cover A edition, but in this same auction, the special edition sold. So there's only a thousand copies of this ever printed. And this one was a 9.8 special edition of Clone Wars number one. Very, very expensive book. Uh, but this one did sell for a great deal. It sold for $4,650. Uh, the last sale prior to this was $6,800. Uh, and so $46.50 is the new low, recent low, for this book. I think it's probably going to continue to come down just a little bit, but $46.50 was a really great buy. Again, this is the special edition of Clone Wars number one. There was only a 1,000 copies printed in total. I think there's 131 or so in a 9.8 grade on the census. So that's a pretty special book. Next up, Heir to the Empire number one. This is the newsstand edition. So I've got the direct edition, but this newsstand edition is very, very tough to get. There's only, I think, 80 or so of these in a 9.8 grade for the newsstand. Not many of these printed, obviously. Uh, obviously, the first appearance of Grand Admiral Thrawn. This one sold for $17.75. That's down a little bit from the last sale. The last sale was $18.50. Uh, but still a fairly expensive book. In a direct edition, you can expect to pay for eight, eight to $900, somewhere in that ballpark. But if you want the newsstand, there's only about 70 or 80 of these available on the census. So a very tough one to get. Next up, Darth Vader number three, the variant edition. Uh, this is the one in 25 ratio, of var ratio variant by Salvador LaRocca. Uh, this is one I did just pick up on Facebook. 
And uh, if uh, I think by the time this video airs, I will already have shown it. But if not, a video is coming with some recent pickups. So I did get this one uh, very recently. This is obviously the first appearance of Dr. Chelly Ephra and her two droids, Triple Zero and BT-1. And this is a pretty fantastic cover. This one sold for ten fifty, which again is down. Uh, I still paid less than this. I paid ten. I think I paid 1015 for my copy. I think it'll still come down even further. I bet if you're patient, you can pick this one up for eight to nine hundred dollars. But uh, you know, just just be patient on that one. But that one did sell for ten fifty. Uh, next up, we've got the variant edition of Ultimate Fallout Four. Obviously, the first appearance of Miles Morales. This is the one I believe the one in twenty five ratio variant. Very very pricey book as well. This one sold for twenty eight thousand dollars, which again is down from the last sale on Comic Link, which was 36000 So this is well down, but still a very, very pricey book. Uh, next up is just the standard cover A in the first print. So this is what the first print looks like, cover A. And that one sold for $1,621. That one's actually up a little bit. The last sale last month was fifteen fifty. So this one sold for right around the same price. I'm hoping to pick this one up at some point. Uh, but I'm probably I'm I'm aiming for fourteen hundred or so. So it's got a little bit further to fall if I'm going to pick it up. But uh, this was a beautiful example of Ultimate Fallout number four, the first appearance of Miles Morales in the standard cover A. Uh, and then next up we've got Web of Spider Man number thirty two. This is obviously uh, a great story and a pretty iconic cover by Mike Zeck. This is on my want list for next year as well. It shows Spider Man getting out of the grave. Craven thought he he killed Spider Man, but he did not. And he's crawling out of the grave. This is just one of those covers that I loved uh, when it first came out in 1987. So I was 10 years old. So I had this book at one point when I was a kid. And I've got to get it. I have to have this book in a 9.8 grade. And it's fairly reasonable right now. $366. You can expect to pay between $350 and $400 for this one in a direct edition. The newsstands go for $450 to $500. Uh, next up, X-Men 133. Uh, this price is up. It sold for $13.06. This is the first solo story for Wolverine in a X-Men comic. And it's the first solo cover for Wolverine. So this is a pretty important book. This is the direct edition. And uh, last month, this was selling for about $1,100. This one sold for $1,306. So $1,306. So this book is up a little bit. Obviously, Wolverine's got a little bit of heat to him because he is appearing in the new Deadpool movie. So, you know, it, it, it's going to vary. You know, it's going to fluctuate depending on what kind of stories get released or photos from the Deadpool 3 filming get released. But it's on hold right now with the actors and writers strike. So anyway, one, $133. And it did sell. Uh, next up, 141, X-Men number 141. This is the Days of Future Past storyline. Now's a really good time to pick this one up. This one sold for $752. This one was kind of hovering between $950 and $1050, but this one did sell for $752, and it was a beautiful example, freshly graded. So lots of really good information on key issue comics for not only Star Wars, but some of the other lines out there and some pretty incredible prices. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I'll be back soon.